Before studying the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism, we have to deal with the question of how we can make any comparison at all between an exact science, expressed in the highly sophisticated language of modern mathematics, and spiritual disciplines which are mainly based on meditation and insist on the fact that their insights cannot be communicated verbally. What we want to compare are the statements made by scientists and Eastern mystics about their knowledge of the world. What we need to clarify are these two points, the nature of the knowledge involved and the language in which this knowledge is expressed. Throughout history, it has been recognized that the human mind is capable of two kinds of knowledge, or two modes of consciousness. These have often been termed the rational and the intuitive, and have traditionally been associated with science and religion, respectively. In the West, the intuitive, religious type of knowledge is often devalued in favor of rational scientific knowledge, whereas the traditional Eastern attitude is in general just the opposite. The following statements about knowledge by two great minds of the West and the East typify the two positions. In Greece, Socrates made the famous statement, I know that I know nothing. In China, Lao Tzu said, Not knowing that one knows is best. In the East, the values attributed to the two kinds of knowledge are often already apparent from the names given to them. For example, the Hindu Upanishads speak about a higher and a lower knowledge, and associate the lower knowledge with various sciences, the higher with religious awareness. Buddhists talk about relative and absolute knowledge, or about conditional truth and transcendental truth. Chinese philosophy, on the other hand, has always emphasized the complementary nature of the intuitive and the rational, and has represented them by the archetypal pair yin and yang, which form the basis of Chinese thought. Accordingly, two complementary philosophical traditions, Taoism and Confucianism, have developed in ancient China to deal with the two kinds of knowledge. Rational knowledge is derived from the experience we have with objects and events in our everyday environment. It belongs to the realm of the intellect whose function it is to discriminate, divide, compare, measure, and categorize. In this way, a world of intellectual distinctions is created, a world of opposites which can only exist in relation to each other, which is why Buddhists call this type of knowledge relative. Abstraction is a crucial feature of this knowledge, because in order to compare and to classify the immense variety of shapes, structures, and phenomena around us, we cannot take all their features into account but have to select a few significant ones. Thus we construct an intellectual map of reality in which things are reduced to their general outlines. Rational knowledge is thus a system of abstract concepts and symbols, characterized by the linear, sequential structure which is typical of our thinking and speaking. In most languages, this linear structure is made explicit by the use of alphabets, which serve to communicate experience and thought in long lines of letters. The natural world, on the other hand, is one of infinite varieties and complexities, a multi-dimensional world which contains no straight lines or completely regular shapes, a world where things do not happen in sequences, but all together, a world where, as modern physics tells us, even empty space is curved. It is clear that our abstract system of conceptual thinking can never completely describe or understand this reality. In thinking about the world, we are faced with the same kind of problem as the cartographer who tries to cover the curved face of the earth with a sequence of flat maps. We can only expect an approximate representation of reality from such a procedure, and all rational knowledge is therefore necessarily limited because our representation of reality is so much easier to grasp than reality itself, we tend to confuse the two and to take our concepts and symbols for reality. In the West, the semanticist Alfred Korsybski made exactly this point with his powerful slogan, The map is not the territory. What the Eastern mystics are concerned with is a direct experience of reality which transcends not only intellectual thinking, but also sensory perception. 
Such knowledge is called absolute knowledge by Buddhists because it does not rely on the discriminations, abstractions, and classifications of the intellect which are always relative and approximate. It is, so we are told by Buddhists, the direct experience of undifferentiated, undivided, indeterminate suchness. Complete apprehension of this suchness is not only the core of Eastern mysticism, but is the central characteristic of all mystical experience. The fact, obvious from any reading of the newspapers, that humanity has not become much wiser over the past two thousand years, in spite of a prodigious increase in rational knowledge, is ample evidence of the impossibility of communicating absolute knowledge by words. As Chuang Tzu said, if it could be talked about, everybody would have told their brother. Absolute knowledge is thus an entirely non-intellectual experience of reality, an experience arising in a non-ordinary state of consciousness which may be called a meditative or mystical state. Although physicists are mainly concerned with rational knowledge and mystics with intuitive knowledge, both types of knowledge occur in both fields.